A beautiful family RV with a versatile seating system directly across from the TV, plus upgraded kitchen with beautiful cabinetry. Folks, this right here is the 2021 Keystone Passport 2951BH. All right, let's dive right into the kitchen. Um, I think they did a great job overall. You'll see the, the L-shaped kitchen here, and it actually has good prep space right here. And this, I, I really enjoy this, um, just because, you know, I, well, yes, you can get sink top covers, and yes, as a recessed cooktop, and so that does help. I still want something that is dedicated, and that's what you get. Plus, over to the side here, you have enough space for a coffee maker. Um, is there an electrical outlet up there, Aaron? There is. Okay, perfect. Well, I was gonna say. Right there it is. I was just saying, I don't see one under the cabinet. So, because this is where I'd want to put my coffee maker, right? If it's me, I have this big countertop space that I can't really use for much else, maybe a drying rack. But, um, you know, that's, that's where I'd put my coffee maker. So I'm glad they did that. Because they have the upgraded countertops, right? They use a thermofoil, which is kind of, uh, in my mind, in between like a T mold and a solid surface, right? Definitely better than T mold because you don't have. The, the molding popping off around the edge, it always happens with tea mold and water gets in it and it rots and your countertop shot. Nobody wants that. In fact, this is such a good system that very similar to solid surface, it allows you to undermount the sink, which I really like. Much cleaner look, easier to clean the countertops. You don't have that rim around here. Um, and you know, it is a nice single uh, stainless steel bowl. It's nice and deep. You also notice the high rise oil rub bronze faucet on here. This is a pull out faucet. So that makes wash and rinse and dishes a little bit easier. And if your coffee maker's over here, I take a Keurig. And the great thing about having a pull out, and I know it's like one lazy step, but instead of removing the water basin to fill it up, just go boop, just like that. Take it out, psh, fill it up right there. Anyway, pro tip, I guess. Um, but anyway, I do like the, the overall countertop space. Plus you get this addition right here. So if you, you know, just need a little bit more, you can have a little bit over to the other side of the sink. Finishing out the countertop is this recessed cooktop with the glass cover. So you have that as prep space, Fury and branded. Um, you know, you have the lot, the, the lobs, the light up knobs there. That's what lob is, in case you're wondering, Aaron. Just combined them. Uh, so there's the, the light up knobs. If you push this down, it lights up the oven as well. If it's up, it is knobs only, but decent size oven. As far, as far as storage, let's talk about cabinet space. I really think they did a good job down below. Uh, they tried to minimize components and maximize space. So you'll see you have a couple of drawers right here. Good location for uh, a lot of your flatware, you know, your knives, things like that. That's where I would want it. You'll also see storage right down underneath. Plus, you get this big pull-out drawer right here, which I, uh, I rather enjoy. Another thing that I love underneath the sink, exactly where I want it, is my trash can. The coolest thing about this one, take a look at this, Aaron. Come on around, show everyone what we got. Boom, you can open it from this side as well, which I really like. So now I can just take that trash can right outside. What I will say, again, another pro tip, this right here is the weight to your pull-out faucet. So try not to have your trash can where this weight is going to uh, hit and hold up because then it won't go back in, it won't retract the way you want it to. So I would kind of have it over to that side. Um, and even though there's enough space for two trash cans, again, I would leave room for that rather than installing a second trash can. The other thing I like is right over here, look at that folks, you have three huge drawers as soon as you walk in. I really like that drawer space. Take a look up top, uh, control panel will be there as well as your multimedia center. That's probably something that's important to know. And then you have the cabinets across the top. Now, Throughout this whole kitchen, I will say, I, I like the color of the wood. You know, they didn't go farmhouse like a lot of others, but they did brighten it up. Then they went with some darker poles. And I like the poles, and I've seen other manufacturers use similar ones, but normally they put them down here, which I actually kind of prefer. Uh, the only other thing is that these, these handles, um, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't really love these particular ones. The style of them is fine, the color is fine, but what I find, and Aaron, if you can get in kind of close to show people, is that my fingertips, right, don't go back there very far. Like it's hard to stick a lot of my finger in there and get a good grip. And so what I'm kind of forced to do when I pull, it, it, because there's not just a lot of space, is it pushes these knuckles right here against the wood when I open it. it a very minor thing, right? I mean, I, I know it's not a, a big deal. And, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe I just open them a different way. I, I, I don't know. But it, for me, it's just a little bit of a turnoff, right? If I'm in here and I'm constantly open and closing, um, you know, it just, it's not, that, I just feel like they could have 
having a little bit bigger pulls or a little more grip on this side so it's just easier if, if i have to make a gripe that's what it's going to be everything else about this uh this camper i really do like you'll see a microwave right there hood directly underneath right right where you would expect it to be uh take a step a little bit further i do just want to point out the ceiling height in here folks i'm six foot tall i have a ton of space nice big barreled ceiling ac system it is ge with the quick dump they use the blade ac system in here for the duct work uh that's a, the new system by keystone it's something it's, it's like 30 percent quieter i mean it's like just as quiet as the whisper quiet acs uh and the the way they it, and it, it's a patent that they have for that system but the way that they have set it up uh it actually puts out more airflow so it actually cools even better than your standard system coming a little bit further is our ge fridge now this is a 12 volt compressor driven fridge uh, nice, quick, easy check, right? If you are out and about, you're on the lot, um, not many dealerships have shore power to every unit out there. So if they hook up a battery pack or there's a battery on it and it turns on and there's a light in the fridge, it's a 12 volt fridge. Always thinking, right? Um, but the cool thing about a 12 volt is that, again, the fact that it does run off your battery. So if you're doing a little bit of uh, boondocking, right, where you don't have shore power, if you have a couple batteries in solar, this is a low power consumption. You can basically run this fridge uh, on just that battery and solar power, which is pretty darn cool. Moving in further yet, we get into that entertainment system, and that is directly across from our sofa dinette combo. And I will show you kind of how this works in just a moment. But know that it is a nice large TV, which I love. Underneath, there is not storage, and the reason being is because we have an outside kitchen, which I personally prefer. Um, let me know in the comment section, let me know what, what you guys think. You know, would you rather have storage? Would you rather have the outside kitchen? Because I see manufacturers go both ways. Aaron, what, what's your take? What's your hot take, buddy? I really like the outside kitchen, personally. Yeah. I think it's nice to be able to just have it all set up, ready to go. I, I agree. See, I, I knew I liked you. That's why we get along. When we open it up uh, right up top here, good storage. I, I like that they built in a shelf. A lot of times manufacturers won't. It's just this huge space. It's hard to use. I think that's a, a actually a great space to put that shelf in there. I would put a bunch of board games in there because I'm a huge board game guy, but... You know, whatever else you want to fit in there. If you want to make that pantry space and put all your, you know, Girl Scout cookies and s'more fixins and whatever else you want up there, go for it. But you have this space here as well. And this I like. Passport's been doing this for a while. They kind of give you this versatile pantry space. So if you want this as pantry, use it as pantry. These shelves are uh, removable and adjustable. So if you want to hang clothes, take both these shelves out. You have the shelves underneath for any folded. If you want to do all folded clothes, you can do that too. You want to put food in there, you can do that as well. Just a lot of options, right? Helping to customize, making things versatile. I certainly appreciate that. Another thing I want to point out, folks, this is a big change. Look at that. We have a door that shuts the way it should. That's pretty darn cool. I know it may seem like a minor thing, but you'd be surprised how few manufacturers use something to actually like frame out the door, if you will. Far too often, it's just a simple thin piece of plastic that they put all the way around and the door just doesn't shut. This one actually does a good job. And you can see in here, I mean, you know, they had to actually route it out. It is an actual wood frame. So kudos to them for that. I always appreciate quality in an RV. Taking a seat uh, right here. This is, uh, again, I guess if I have uh, one more knock, this is probably it. Now, you know, I know that Passport's trying to be lightweight, and that is kind of uh, a weight-saving issue, is using a plastic bowl instead of porcelain. Me, personally, I'm probably replacing this guy just because I, I want a porcelain bowl. But what I always tell people, right, if it comes with a plastic, cool, use it for, you know, three, four years. And then when it starts getting dirty, then swap it out. There's no need to swap it out right away. You know, use the toilet for, for what you can. Um, coming into the bathroom, though, there is, uh, you know, decent countertop space here on both sides. You have a, a pretty faucet, like what they did. Actual medicine cabinet here. You know, it's a wood medicine cabinet, not just a plastic one. When I step into the shower at six foot tall, I can uh, stand all the way up right here as long as I'm underneath the skylight. If not, it's probably not going to happen. But it is a good size skylight. I should be good to go. Turning sideways in here probably not the best idea um if i shut this yeah i'm gonna it, it'll be close chances are i'll be i'll be rubbing on it a little bit so you know with this size shower you kind of stand like this grab the wand and you're gonna shower shower that way uh it is also worth noting you do have a heat vent right here um does this one have an ac vent it does not so you have a heat vent but not an ac vent so bear that in mind if it's uh cold you can stay warm but if it's warm 
well, you're gonna stay warm. <laughs> There's also a courtesy light in there, which that I do like. Did you see that, Aaron? I just want people to see kind of in the base of the shower right there. So that way, if you have to use the bathroom in the middle of the night, uh, you can just turn that courtesy light on. That is actually super convenient. There's one by the front door as well. Um, so it's just enough light. You can see what you're doing without having to turn on all the lights. 300 pound weight capacity on these double over double bunks built in ladders so you can easily climb up onto the top bunk both bunks have 120 and 12 volt usb ports there so standard 120 plus the usb on both so that if kids have you know cell phones tablets whatever they can charge them up and this lifts up and locks in place now this cushion you'll want to throw on top when you travel but I love when the manufacturers do this. Uh, you get that door, this really gives you a lot of storage access, lets you carry a lot more. And I especially love what they did right over to the side where they gave you these two storage areas as well. I think that is phenomenal because even when you take all this out, you can still use those. You know, if you wanna throw a duffel bag under there with clothes or a, a laundry basket, you can put it in there, just pull it out when you need it. I think that's phenomenal storage. Let's talk about the super slide. A couple cool things that they do here. One is the flooring. I want to point that out. You have beautiful vinyl all the way throughout. And then right here, they went with like a PVC weave flooring. Um, a lot of manufacturers are doing that instead of carpet because it's easier to clean. It's stain resistant. Um, it's going to be resistant to scratches if you have pets, things like that. And it, it's been in the marine industry for a long time. They're just finally starting to bring it into RVs. And it is a very uh, a welcome addition, in my opinion. For the sofa and the dinette, I just kind of want to show you how this works real quick because this is kind of their, you know, versatile seating system. So for the sofa, um, this one I should be a jackknife. Yeah. So, or nope, this is a pullout. I apologize. This is a pullout uh, sofa. So if you need sleeping space, let me move this guy real quick. There we go. Pop those guys up. You can see just like so. That's gonna come down. And then this last one right here drops down. That is your trifold. That is what you get to sleep on, right? Not bad. For a six foot adult, here, I'll lay on here real quick. See what we got. Ah! Not terrible, right? I can make this work. Um, so that's what you're looking at for, for an adult. My, you know, six feet, my, or six foot tall, my feet do hang off a little bit. But all in all, that's gonna be uh, much better than like a, a jackknife sofa for one or uh, traditional pullout, right? I would much rather have this. So we put that back down. That is your pretty standard sofa. So what makes this one special? Well, let me show you. With these back on, what you can do, you'll notice it comes with this piece right here. The back of this dinette folds forward. This piece then fills this gap. And now you have like a little chase area. Um, and so that, that's kind of the idea behind it. Now, I, to be perfectly honest, I, I'm not super in love with it. it it's not bad. But here, here's my problem. Is if I sit here, unless I'm a child, this just isn't super comfortable, right? Like, it, it's not long enough for me to feel like my feet are up. And it's not short enough to have my legs hang down. It's kind of that in-between where it's resting on my calves. And besides, you know, making it look like I have muscular calves that I don't have, um, there's just not a huge benefit for me there. So I, I understand what they're trying to do. Um, I, it just, for me, it's not necessarily 100%. The thing I do really like, though, shockingly, that I didn't think I would, is the fact that the back is on an angle, right? A lot of times your dinette, it's like nearly straight up and down. This is actually way more comfortable than a standard dinette. I feel a lot more relaxed if I'm sitting here playing a board game. This is very comfortable to me. So uh, I do like that. And I have plenty of room between, you know, my stomach and the table, legs, I'm good there. This also does drop down into a bed. So, you know, you still get the same sleeping capacity you would normally get uh, with a dinette. Pull down shades all the way throughout. Um, I really do enjoy those as well. The roller shades, they are blackout so that if you wanna sleep in, you can do that too. Now making our way up into the bedroom. One more time, guys, just wanna show you. You wanna talk about versatility. Passport's got you covered. Excellent versatility right there with your shelves as well as that hanging rod. Big entrance into the master bedroom, which I think is uh, pretty crucial because a lot of times if it's small, it's hard to do the shuffle around to the, get to either side of the bed. Here you can absolutely do it. One of the other big things I love about Passport 
This right here is a 60 by 80 residential queen bed, folks. So I'm not gonna put my feet on here, but as you can see, I have plenty of room that if I wanna scoot up, I have the space to do that. So my feet aren't gonna hang off like, hap like what happens in a lot of other RVs. You also notice on the sides, you have nightstands, electrical outlets, USB port, storage, you know, wardrobe storage on both sides. So you can tell if you want, you can have four wardrobes in here, right? One on each side of the bed, one right outside of the bedroom, and that one near the back. Storage all the way across the top there too. And in the corner, folks, if you want a TV, that right there is where it'll mount. With the slide all closed up, you will see that through the main entrance, you're, you kind of can't get back to the rest of the camper. Now, what you can access is the master bedroom. So if you need to pull over and take a nap, the main entrance is the one you want to use. But if you recall, this one does have that second entrance directly into the bathroom. And that is exactly how you will get to the bathroom. You're just going to enter from that second door. Come on in, do what you got to do. If you need to get to the refrigerator, that's how you're going to get to it. You're going to come in through the bathroom. You can open this one up. You don't have complete full access. It's not going to swing all the way open, but for the most part, you should be able to get the items out that you need. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at some of the outside features on the 2021 Keystone Passport 2951BH. Right up front, power tongue jack. This makes it nice and easy to connect and disconnect from your tow vehicle. Two 20 pound propane tanks with a cover. Rails right back here for your battery. And then if you take a look over to this side, right there, you'll also see a battery disconnect. Be able to get in there past, past my super massive chest. Just kidding. Um, so you, <laughs> I'm just, I'm making muscle jokes all day today in this thing. Um, anyway, the battery disconnect is super handy because you can just flip a switch and uh, that will kill all power to the RV so you don't get that slow drain. That's gonna be especially important on any RV that has a 12 volt refrigerator because even though it is low power consumption, a 12 volt fridge is definitely gonna have a bigger drain than for example, LED lights. So you do wanna make sure that you cut off the power uh, if you're not using it. Right down underneath, I like to point this out too. This one does have a fully enclosed, insulated, and heated underbelly. So in the event that you're camping, uh, you know, they call it extended season, right? I probably wouldn't take this uh, in winter, but if you're looking at, you know, late fall, early spring, where it just kind of starts dipping below freezing temperatures, you should be okay. Because as long as you're running your furnace, it's blowing that forced air down in that underbelly. And because it is insulated, it should keep things nice and toasty so your tanks and lines don't freeze up on you. Beautiful three-quarter front cap. They painted it black up there, kind of give that faux windshield look without any uh, out any fears of having a leaky windshield. So kind of the best of both worlds, right? Coming into the pass-through, a couple things I do want to show here. One is the fact this is slam latch, metal components, nice heavy door, works very well. Covered hinge, so a bunch of rust doesn't come down your door. You also see a magnetic catch, so you can put it up just like that, put it up and forget it. You know, if kids come by and they're like, oh, I need to shut this. You don't have to worry about a plastic tab breaking, right? The little clip, because a lot of times that's what'll happen. So, gotta love magnetic catch. Taking a look inside, I do want to point this out. The light in here is motion sensor. You have three different settings, on, off, or motion sensor. There's also one of those inside at the entrance. I forgot to mention that, but those are super handy. Bunch of cool components over on the other side, but I do want to uh, kind of touch base on those when we get over to that side, just because it's a little bit easier to see. Power awning, touch a button to roll it out. Same thing to go back in, plus LED light strip on there. A couple speakers, in case you want to listen to music. Those are tied to that multimedia center inside that I showed you. You have the Moride Step Above Step System. Aluminum treads with the grip tape makes it nice and easy to climb up here thanks to that big grab handle, right? You got the grip tape, got the grab handle. You have great control. Also, the aluminum treads aren't going to rust on you, which is always a big bonus. If you want a TV outside, this is where the backer is. That is where you will put your mounting bracket. You also see the connections right here. Because this is a Keystone product, it does utilize Key TV, which is a great system. Because if you plug cable into the back, it's going to feed to every place you have one of these. So all of them can have cable. Uh, super simple and easy to use. I really like that Key TV system. Aluminum alloy wheels on there look nice and pretty. Your outside kitchen I talked about when we were inside is right here. Of course, you have the uh, fridge for some beverages, a little bit of additional storage, whether you want to put solo cups up here, plates, things like that. Two burner cooktop just locks in place. There is a propane quick connect underneath. It's kind of what this little hole right here is for. So you can normally take this propane line, stick it through there. The propane quick connect is behind here. But if you have like a grill or something you want to hook up instead, maybe like a Blackstone flat top, that is the place to hook it up there. 
spray port, you want water outside, this is the place to get it, right? Nice and easy on your campsite here. The other thing I like about this, even though it's, it'll be a little cold, if you're coming back from the beach, something like that, you wanna wash your feet off before you head into the bathroom, that gives you the ability to do it because it is uh, on the campsite and super convenient. This is, of course is that secondary entrance to, to be able to get into the bathroom and as you saw, be able to access the fridge if you are driving or if you need to pull over uh, and your slide is still retracted. Coming around to the back, square tubular bumper with an end cap. Also mounted to the back here, and this is mounted to the bumper, is your spare tire with the cover. Super easy to get to. I love when they put it on the bumper rather than underneath. The access door. As we saw, this of course is so you can flip this up and get to everything, uh, anything that you store in there. Nice large door, big enough for some totes. Um, you know, if you have a smaller cooler, maybe even a kid's bike, you should be able to slip that right in there. Ladder, so you can climb up onto the fully walkable roof, 250 pound weight capacity on there. Again, that is a fully walkable roof. That's one of the changes Passport made about a year and a half, maybe two years ago now. So if you need to get up there for any kind of maintenance, you can. You also see backup camera prep. So if you want backup camera, having that prep makes it easier to install. Coming around to the backside, you'll see 30 amp detachable power cord is located there. And if we make our happy little way all the way up front, a couple little things, one, is the fact you kind of have like your convenience center right here. This is a welcome addition as well. So you have uh, your outside shower with both hot and cold water access, your key TV multi-source controller. You'll also see power stabilizer jack controller is in there because you do have power stabilizer jacks, both of your water connections as well as your black tank flush and you have this drip pan because as we all know, for whatever reason, we never change out our gaskets and our water hoses and they eventually will leak. And so that's what happens, it leaks. So you have the drip pan to catch all that and then it'll all just drain right outside. The other thing I wanted to show you is right up here. We talked about solar, especially with that fridge. Take a look at that, boom, solar controller. Up on that roof is a solar panel, folks. You already get solar, how, how much easier can you get? I love that. And taking it one step further, you will see right over here, that battery disconnect as well as the inverter. What is that, is that 1200? Let me check. Yes, that is a 1200 watt inverter. So that will invert some of those 120 outlets inside. So that way, you know, as you're traveling or if you, again, don't have uh, shore power, right? You don't have a generator. You can still use some of those 120 outlets. I can't promise which ones they are. I would imagine probably one in the bedroom, one in the main living area, maybe one in the kitchen. Um, but again, at least you do have some outlets that will function, even if you're just running off battery and solar. That is a cool feature. Folks, if you are loving this Keystone Passport right here and you want price and availability, all you have to do is click on the link in the description. I have people all the time to comment and say, Ian, how much is it? And I tell them, click on the link. Why? Because that will give you pricing and availability closest to you. And that's a big deal. So all I gotta do is click on it. All right, folks, that wraps it up. Thanks for watching. I'm Ian Baker and let's go camping.